Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about dynamic programming. And dynamic programming is a big topic, but we're going to try to summarize it. So dynamic programming is basically dividing a program or dividing a problem into smaller subproblems and then solving them either recursively or with another method. And dynamic programming, um, it can apply to, um, it can be used to solve a, a very wide variety of um, problems and one such problem is the coin change problem and this is a bit of a famous one um, in competitive programming so say you have a total amount let's say 10 and you have um, a set of coins let's say 1 2 and 5 now these are basically um, uh, separate uh, values of um, different coins so there's a coin worth 1 and there's a coin worth two, and there's a coin worth five. And then the question is, um, how can we um, uh, get change for this amount here in such a way that it minimizes the amount of coins uh, needed? So in other words, how can we, uh, like with which coin specifically, can we uh, minimize the number of coins required? Now, if we take a look at this, since um, uh, this program, uh, this um, these numbers are relatively easy to work with, we can see that if we use two um, coins that are worth five, it will only take uh, two of these coins to, um, to, 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 to get the target amount of 10 cents or dollars or whatever it may be. And um, it's, it's, it uses two coins, which is better than say if you use only uh, coins that are worth two, which in which case you will need five coins. Now another example, if you have, um, if you have say, uh, the total amount you want to achieve, um, if you want it to be uh, seven, oh, seven is too easy, maybe eight. Um, so with eight, um, the best way would be just to use a five coin and then use a two coin and then use a one coin that's I think that's a bit obvious um, but but now we're going to learn about how um, we can use dynamic programming to solve this problem because if you're a beginner to competitive programming the solution might not be that obvious and um, so we so I have um, two uh, methods here um, ready and the first one is a uh, recursion so that's uh, if you watch our video on recursion, it's basically where a function calls a function again and again to um, in order to solve a problem like, uh, well, in order to solve a problem that has that where you have to repeat an operation a bunch of times. Uh, and now you can, and here you can see uh, it does indeed use recursion because the function calls itself. And the second method is called memoization. And memoization is basically where you prepare um, prepare an empty array or a list or whatever, and you slowly um, fill up the array with solutions. Now with this method, you wouldn't have to use recursion. And as you know, recursion um, can get really messy. Uh, with larger numbers, it becomes super slow exponentially. and um, they usually have exponential time complexities. But uh, with memoization, you can just slowly fill up the array with solutions. And whenever you want to um, check what the solution is for a previous, uh, for a previous uh, case, for a smaller case, you can just uh, go back to the list and check out what the solution is for a certain value. And what I'm talking about is this. So, so how we're, so these two, um, these two different solutions, uh, they're going to solve the problem in um, about the same way. So let's just use this as an example because uh, smaller numbers are easier to work with. So basically, um, it just tries the coins one by one. And uh, so we, we start off with um, A and then we try to, uh, we try each of these coins and we subtract these coins from eight um, and then see which one is the smaller one, uh, which is, I guess, a sort of greedy algorithm uh, in which you try to 
uh, optimize it every step of the solution. For example, in this case, a minus 1 equals 7, but 8 minus 2 equals 6, and then 8 minus 5 equals 3. And it chooses the most optimal solution, which in this case is the um, 3, because we're trying to achieve it with less coins, as, as few coins as possible. And obviously, um, if we want to achieve that, we want to use, well, we want to use um, as large coins as possible, because larger coins, um, instead of a bunch of smaller coins, will optimize the total number of coins. Um, if that makes sense. And then uh, it finds the optimal solution 3. And then at this point, um, with recursion, it just tries, it just, um, it just uh, does another um, function, another recursive call on the number 3 with the same set of coins. And then it performs the operation again. But with memoization, it just stores the value in the array and then um, it just keeps um, solving for the, for the larger total. Um, number or the overall or the like the actual number the actual amount you're trying to get change for this is like the sub problem and this is like the bigger problem so we'll just call them that and then with recursion um, we just keep going and then we recursively um, do another function call and then we see uh, which of these um, are optimal so 3 minus 1 equals 2 and then 3 minus 2 equals 1, and then 3, oops, 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. And um, you can see here, uh, we are into the negatives, but um, in, in both of these, um, in both of these solutions, we have like an exit um, case or exit, yeah, an exit case, like if it's smaller than 0, it's, it returns negative 1 and um, tells us that we have failed to find a solution. Anyways, um, we so we can uh, scratch this. So um, as we can see here, one is the optimal solution because it's the fewer, it's the it's the lower, um, it's the lower change after we use a a two coin. So at this point, we do it with one again, and then um, the only choice now would be to use a one value coin, and then we can find that. Um, the optimal solution is 1, 1 coin, and a 1, 2 coin, and a 1, 3 coin. And then memoization works um, roughly the same way, except it doesn't have to like call, um, call each, call each, um, call, call the function recursively to solve for each subproblem. Uh, instead, it starts from um, the, 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 the few, the fewest, the 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 smallest value, and then works works its way up to the um, larger subproblems. So let's actually see this um, in action. So um, first, let's try to do this with um, recursion. So as we can see, we have a set of coins, um, a, a penny, and then um, a coin worth five and then 10, and then 25, and then 100, which are um, coincidentally uh, the coins, um, the Canadian coins. And so we're going to use these. And then the total change we're aiming at is uh, 224 cents or dollars or whatever. And we can check this out. Uh, first, let's actually first let's use a smaller number. So 25. All right. And so you can see uh, with memoization it just solves the problem in a minute which um, isn't a surprise considering I did an easy one so let's do 24 okay so in a moment it figures out that the optimal solution is uh, six coins or you can use uh, six point six coins at best and um, it just basically solves that um, so we can see that the the, the solution that it came up with is um, with two 10 coins and then four um, one coins. That's the solution. There are alternate alternative solutions, but um, that's just the minimum you can achieve. 
But now let's try this with recursion. So recursion is also pretty fast, and let's compare this. Um, so, or there. Okay, so it took about um, a tenth of a second, and then let's check with recursion. So in this case, recursion took a bit longer. So, but as we can see, well, we will see that. Uh, this number increases exponentially with recursion. And uh, let's try this with memoization first. Okay, so yeah, it, it, it still took um, only uh, a split second, uh, but with uh, recursion, it just keeps on calling itself. And if we interrupt this, um, we can see that we had um, 197 recursive calls, uh, which is not too good considering it didn't even finish. Um, but yeah, but memorization. Uh, so as we can see here, memorization did much better than recursion because well, recursion uh, has an exponential time complexity, but memorization sort of opt optimizes the um, the search by uh, just basically remembering the. The, ca the solutions to the smaller subproblems, but recursion do doesn't do that. It just calls recursively for um, every subproblem. But um, there's um, a little decorator that we can um, use called cache, um, in which we actually do remember our solutions, except it just does that invisibly. So if we uh, check this out again, yeah, so with uh, the normal recursion, it just doesn't finish. But if we um, if we add the the decorator, we can see that it also takes a split second. And let's see. Yeah, so in this case, it's actually faster than the memoization. And what's happening here is that this. Um, decorator, it basically um, works the same way as memoization. It uh, remembers all the all the subproblems, all the calculations that um, it did for later, um, instead of just uh, calling it recursively again for every new for every new subproblem that comes up, even though the program has already done that subproblem. If that makes sense. So yeah except that might be um, more optimized than the memoization solution I came up with. So yeah. So this was um, an introduction into the very basics of competitive programming like or dynamic programming and like what dynamic programming um, is, what are the basics to it, what are what does like a dynamic programming solution look like. And yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.